Hello, and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent, Brittany Wilson. Welcome to the new year. As 2017 begins, we take a look at how students are experiencing compassion, helping the environment, and leaving a legacy for the future. Plus, we have more from our student correspondents. When students think of college, they usually think about in-state big schools. However, Fern Creek's Ivy Plus program teaches them otherwise. A spouse, kids, groceries, taxes, some JCPS students received a dose of reality by participating in the reality store. I'm Ballard correspondent Riley Grief, and I'll have the story. I'm FC correspondent Alexis Harding, and here at Fraser Elementary, JCPS students get to learn in creative ways. We've seen a lot of stories in the news about the refugee crises around the world. Students at Butler Traditional High School participated in the Walk a Mile in My Shoes program where they got an up-close look at the refugee experience. Now we have some folks on their way to jail for stealing food. No seven? No seven in the from here? Uh, right now we're at Butler High School. Uh, we're in their small gym and today we're having a refugee camp simulation that's hosted by Global Human Project. How are you? Your name? Amani. Age? Name. They are going through what a uh, simulation of what it's like to be a refugee trying to gain access to a uh, to a new country. Uh, they were all assigned family groups. Uh, they uh, had information on their names, their backgrounds, information on where they're from. Because it shows how hard it is to get to the United States, and it's really hard. To, like it shows how hard it is for refugees. It gives them an insight into uh, people's lives as they were like, you know, going through this process. And then it just makes them feel like that. So like maybe um, one day they could do something to help out refugees coming here. What country are you coming from? Syria. Syria? Yes, sir. Uh, are, you, are you afraid to live in your country that you're from, Syria? Then uh, they have to cross a border where they could be stopped by border patrol and put in jail. Sorry, I can't get them out of jail. What? Uh, are you serious? Uh, all obstacles that uh, actual refugees have to go through. Um, they have to register and uh, decipher a uh, message in a new language. And then they, uh, if they do all that, then they actually gain access to the actual camp. I learned that it's a long process to get to a um, new country and it can be hard and sometimes you can't make it. Uh, once in there, they have to gather food for their family, water, go through a medical screening, uh, go through an interview uh, to gain access to a new country, uh, and learn and learn uh, a new language too. I thought it would be fun, and then also as a refugee myself, like a while ago before I got here, I thought it was like a really cool program to like show them how I felt when I was younger to like be in the uh, system like this. We're doing simulations to understand what it's like, like how hard it is for you to be a refugee and how you mistreat it. It helps me to see what my parents had to go through as a refugee. I like to um, see physically. Like, I don't like to just sit in a classroom and just listen to the teacher, because that's kind of boring, you lose interest. So like doing this, it's like, makes it more fun and it's easier to learn. Gilmore Lane Elementary's campus is expanding their tree canopy with the help of a generous donation. The students are learning the benefits that trees provide for now and the future. We're at Gilmore Lane Elementary School and we uh, just planted a black gum tree. Gilmore Lane Elementary School is the beneficiary of a local businessman. His name is Charlie Marsh and he's with SC Galt. And Charlie has a property in this area, so he decided that he would fully underwrite the planting of trees on this campus. Some um, evergreens, some of our native uh, junipers. There are beautiful black gums, some red maples. Um, there are some willows because there's a few wet areas here. So there's a great variety of trees here. We were like putting dirt around the tree and putting mulch around it. It was a little hard because I you had to use shovels and you had to pick up dirt. And it it holds keep, it in keep, like the yeah, water it helps. and moisture from yeah. the soil. It's really hard, but the good thing about it is that we were helping the environment. Planting trees in the, uh, helps our environment. Uh, what? It helps us breathe well and uh, helps us keep cool around hot days. This is the black gum tree. Uh, it was, uh, we, this is the tree we planted here. Studies show time and time again that children that are exposed to natural things like trees 
perform better in school. They feel better, they, um, they behave better, and uh, they perform better. It helps the world uh, from uh, being completely uh, pollutified from the pollution, and it uh, kind of helps us hang out with uh, your friends and stuff. Trees Louisville actually has been partnering with Jefferson County Public Schools since last planting season. We have planted upwards of a thousand trees at Jefferson County Public Schools. We planted almost a hundred trees here. They give off oxygen and they suck in the bad gases that make pollution. If it's hot outside, you can go under a tree because it's shady. You can read a book. Um, it could be a, a private tree, like if you're getting bugged by your little sister or your little brother, you can go under a tree and just relax. In order for us to have a healthy community, we have to have lots of trees, and trees obviously take a long time to grow. So involving children from the get-go and helping them learn at an early age to appreciate trees is incredibly important because they're the ones that are going to be uh, maintaining these trees and protecting these trees and, and benefiting the most from these trees. We are Gilmore Lane and we are JCPS. Students at Fern Creek High School are discovering the path to schools in the Ivy League. Correspondent Parker Yannick brings us the story. Fern Creek's Ivy Plus program is designed to introduce students to some of the highest ranked schools in the nation. Ivy Plus is also designed to keep students on track during the college application process. Bo Baker is an AP English teacher and founder of the Ivy Plus program. Mr. Baker acts as a coordinator to help students to get into these colleges. Ivy Plus program is an outgrowth of what we started uh, probably about seven or eight years ago. Is I would have juniors, I kind of would work with them and their parents uh, on giving them information and access to colleges, essentially trying to find the right school for the right kid. Um, what I started noticing is I would have some kids or some parents would start thinking very late in junior year about what schools were out there. Um, but by that time it was a little late in the kind of the game. So, Dr. Meyer approached me and asked if we could kind of get a program started that would identify some of the better kids in the school academically, grade-wise, standardized test scores, work with them and their parents to try to give them as much information as we could to find the right school for them. With the help of Mr. Baker and Ivy Plus, students are given the confidence to explore their choices. Fern Creek senior Pearl Morte knew high school would not be the end of her education, but with the help of Ivy Plus, she is willing to explore other options. I never thought I could go to, I guess, a quote unquote big or a important college because I was just going to go to UofL, obviously. Now that's changed. Now I have like a school like Duke on my mind instead of UofL, so that's cool. Ivy Plus student Farouk Ramek was surprised at how Ivy Plus revealed new colleges and opportunities for him. Well, before Ivy Plus, I didn't really know much about colleges. I didn't know which colleges to go to, or what would be on my ra radar, what would be suited for me. So when I went into Ivy Plus, I was uh, jaded to the whole, you know, uh, how to re pick the college that's right for you. Colleges are not just about what they teach, as atmosphere is very important when deciding where to apply. Last summer, Mr. Baker took some of the Ivy Plus students on a trip to visit many highly ranked colleges. Those colleges include Earlham, Denison, Kenyon, Oberlin, and Notre Dame. Next summer, Ivy Plus is going on a trip to visit colleges like Duke and Wofford. Ivy Plus is a growing program in Fern Creek designed to broaden students' views on college and introduce them to applications. Programs like Ivy Plus shows how JCPS teachers help prepare students for the next step. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Parker Yannick. We have a lot more stories about our kids coming up. Stay with us. My name is Ja'Cory Arthur. I'm the music specialist at Height Elementary School. The best part about my job is really the product, and that doesn't happen until after the job is done. It's a moment of joy for me to see the kids finally have that light bulb go off and things click for them to be able to do everything from reading rhythms to singing certain pitches. As a teacher, Hyde Elementary is like a big family. What do you remember from last time you were in music? Very welcoming, very warm, and open to a lot of different ideas that I've brought to the table at the school. The kids are important. They will be the future me's. They will be the future teachers, the presidents, the scientists that 
run the world. So it's very important that we instill values, whether it's in music or fine arts in general, at a young age so that they can be better than what we were. It's really cool to just see us all come together for the purpose of molding the future and teaching kids. I'm Ja'Cory Arthur, and I am JCPS. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent Brittany Wilson. Iroquois High School is using the skills of the students in the construction program to design and build an amphitheater next to the school. Let's see how they are progressing. We're at Iroquois High School. Um, we're doing a amphitheater project and we're pouring concrete today. We spent most of the spring last year drawing this up, taking the kids' ideas and getting them on paper. And once we got the grant from Lowe's, $25,000 grant, and we proceeded forward. And uh, as you can see, it's been a lot of work, but it's paying off for us. I'm an electrician, so I didn't really think about concrete or bricks or pretty much all the stuff that you need to figure out to be able to lay the concrete. And it's a lot of math and it's complicated. All this stuff goes down to connect through layers of nothing but blocks, the foundation. It's a wonderful progression to go from building just a wall, just, just a standard brick to learn how, so you can line everything up, make sure nothing's messed up, to this. This is industrialized, this is amazing. We came out here, before we had, we had all of them come out here, we were already putting down bricks, we were lining it all around, just getting it going for them. What's happening here is finishing up the project that we have been working on for about two years now. We just started working on uh, forming everything, laying everything down just this year, but last year we was working on drawing up the plans and the blueprints and everything. We try to get the kids involved in actual footings and foundation walls and the real world of construction and so they can see it and also you know there's a lot of money to be made. It shows the kids that there's, there's all sorts of things out there to do. It all depends on them, you know, what you want to do. But there's so many career paths and this is a great career. I mean these guys out here they make great money. We took and laid bricks. We took and evened out all the gravel and everything. When they see the end results they get very excited. Actually, actually, it's helped me look at things in a more productive way. Like, you, you got to keep yourself going, be active, just keep working. And it teaches us that, that these guys have done this for years, and it just looks so easy to them. I want to be at that point to where I work hard now, and if I keep on doing this later on, where it's just nothing but gravy. You know, it's just a, a signature of Iroquois, the hard work, and uh, it's going to be here for years to come. The more you know is the more you'll actually be able to do when you get a job because as you get more experience you can do more things than just your traits. This is going to be a class A job and uh, something that all the kids here in Iroquois can be proud of. It's just something I can tell people I've done that and I worked on it. The Pleasure Ridge Park High School media program produces stories for the national show PBS NewsHour and recently spent some time at Mammoth Cave. Correspondent Jalen Level shares some of the challenges they had while shooting underground. With over 1,400 miles of map trails, Mammoth Cave, located in central Kentucky, is considered the longest cave system in the world. What most visitors do not see are the unmarked trails that are used by science teams to study and maintain the health of the cave. This year, our advanced media students here at PRP have been given the privilege to experience Mammoth Cave alongside the scientists. We were chosen as one of only 20 PBS student reporting labs in the nation to find and report on the STEM story at our local national park. I had no experience whatsoever about what was going to happen. I knew that filming in this environment was going to be a real challenge for my journalism students. Uh, we had never filmed in a cave before. It's dark. Um, we weren't sure about our sound and of course the extreme cold and damp was going to probably present some challenges that the students have never had to face before. I heard that we weren't allowed to use the restroom and we had to bring our own food and water and we were going to be down there for at least five hours. Our story surrounds a STEM team of high school students from Mercy Academy that are using their underwater robotic camera to map the Echo River. So there are four zip lines as part of this project. 
About halfway into the whole process, we realized that all we could hear was this beautiful waterfall in the background of all the footage. So we decided to take the Zoom mic and we decided to put it next to the girls' computer so we could have conversation of what they were talking about. The only light we had was um, the headlamps they gave us and the lights that we took. Every time we got it perfect, when the girls would move around and our whole setup would just mess up. Our story isn't done yet. This is a year-long project. We are scheduled to send a different team into the cave in January, and eventually the story will be complete and broadcast on PBS as a collection of the STEM stories going on at our national parks all across the nation. I'm PRP correspondent Jalen Level reporting for our kids. Fern Creek High School student Damara Chavez balances a lot of activities during her senior year. Let's see how she handles all of it. My name is Damara Chavez and I'm a JCPS student athlete. I started playing soccer in third grade for my elementary school. I love playing center mid because I get to form the play and take shots on goal. This year, I was offered the opportunity to be the chapter president for the Best Buddies program. Best Buddies is a program where you get to interact and spend time with the special needs kids. As a chapter president, I have to make sure everything's in check with the buddies and the students, and I plan out events for them. We get to go bowling, we have parties, theme parties, Halloween parties, Christmas parties. We just get to do a lot of things. During school, we have lunch with them, and outside school too. Some days I'm having a bad day, and I could just walk into their classroom and just the way they are it just makes me really happy to be around them they're just really sweet and caring and it just it just makes me happy i am a senior at fern creek high school and i currently have a 3.5 gpa i've been part of the communications program for four years now here at fern creek it's an amazing program because we get a lot of hands-on training with the cameras i plan to attend western kentucky and major in communications we have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. I'm neurosurgeon Shadriwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We are JCPS. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Ballard High School correspondent, Brittany Wilson. A local sporting goods store brought a special surprise to several students who maintained perfect attendance at Middletown Elementary. You probably see some people around the room. Some of you might say, I know somebody over there. We're here at Middletown Elementary uh, with Academy Sports and Outdoors in Middletown. Uh, we're here for our annual bike donation for the schools. We're giving away 30 bikes to these kids here and uh, looking forward to seeing their faces. Several bicycles are somewhere in here. The kids are, I mean, so excited. I mean, you can see behind us, they've got the curtains drawn. The kids are going to be nice and surprised when they come in and uh, it's going to be great. This is the best day of my life. I want a bike! I want a bike and I did it! Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bike for perfect attendance in the helmet. We did a random selection drawing so that all students who met the criteria for attendance would be able to be able to get bikes. So we're so excited today. We've talked to all the parents and the parents uh, are keeping it all quiet. So we're doing a big reveal today and calling those students who were randomly selected to be able to receive these bikes and helmets from Academy Sports. What we decided to do was last month we sent out letters and we said, hey, for those of you who have perfect attendance, we're going to put your name into a drawing. And because we believe that attendance to school is so important. Because if you're not at school, you can't really learn. So if you had good attendance last couple months, 
Your name went into a drawing. We are so excited. We are doing an attendance incentive challenge that we uh, challenged all of our students from October 24th to December 2nd to uh, have perfect attendance. Maya Malone. I won uh, because I was on time for attendance and I was here every day. So we put them all in a drawing for K through three, and we uh, we were able to get these wonderful bikes from Academy Sports. We wanted an opportunity to be able to talk about the importance of attendance because we know if kids are here, then they can learn, and we're looking forward to you know giving them a great opportunity as well as promoting fitness and health by giving them bikes so they can be outside. They get so excited and jumping up and down and, you know, just because some of these kids probably wouldn't necessarily get a bike on their own. So that's what's the greatest part about it is being able to give to kids who might normally not be able to get one. Melanie Brown. The pedals, the seat, the wheels. I want to take this out for a spin today. Our teachers are wonderful and they do a great job, but if they're not present, then they don't get the wonderful things that we have to share for them. So, you know, we want every student to know how important it is to be here every day, ready to learn and excited about learning. And the school is a fun place. Ballard High School students got a taste of the real world at their annual reality store event. Correspondent Riley Grief tells us all about it. Getting a job, raising a family, buying a house, these are things students might want in the future. But how prepared are we? That's where the Reality Store can help. It is sponsored by the Kentucky Agriculture Extension Office. The group visits schools across Kentucky to prepare students to be self-sufficient with their money. Um, the Reality Store is basically where you just go and like purchase stuff and it gives you an occupation and like how many kids you have and what kind of like stuff you need to buy based on your income so it just basically shows you how like life would work. Before coming in here I knew that you had to pay taxes and I knew that you needed all of these things like a house like a car but I didn't realize how much upkeep there was and how big of a chunk of money it is to just keep up the things that you see as basic necessities. On a recent stop at Ballard High School business and technology students rotated to various stations that featured occupations own ownership, groceries, insurance, and even children. Students then had to add up their costs to help them budget their money. This, uh, this program is offered through the Jefferson County Cooperative Extension Office and through Jefferson County 4-H. It's a budgeting money management program. They go into the classroom, the students learn and get to find out about careers and family life. They then come into the reality store and actually put that to use, do some spending, and they have to create a budget and try to stay in with their budget. Well, actually, I am one of three 4-H agents here in the county, along with Kelly. Um, my involvement with Reality Store, Kelly organized it, and I come and help um, help her with selecting the housing, the automobiles, the transportation. We kind of help organize in her office, and then I just come and really support and to help, and volunteer as well, to make sure everyone um, is on the same page and everyone's their budget sheet is accurate. Uh, most schools do follow up. We do um, a self-evaluation with the teachers that are in charge of delivering the lessons and then some of the teachers then take that further and most of them that are in business courses and math classes take that a little bit further throughout the year. I'm Ballard correspondent Riley Grief for our kids. Correspondent Alexis Harding shows us how art and collaboration are coming together at Fraser Elementary. Arts and Craft Field Day at Fraser Elementary is not something you see in an everyday classroom. Students have the opportunity to travel to nine art events with their buddy class. In order to build more of a community in their school, different grades were buddied together. The kids are able to take the standards that we've learned so far in the year and use them to do different activities with their buddies. So they have the older kids are paired with the younger kids and they get to work collaboratively to make projects. This was the sixth year field day included many different types of art. Students experienced music, dancing, and drama. I like to dance in the gym. Painting. It's just fun and when when you start when you start to get the hang of it, it feels like you're an artist. 
drawing cupcakes. One event was dedicated to Veterans Day. Students made parts of a flag that hangs in the hallway today. Like she made like the Veterans Day stuff and she did like thanks to support the, the military people because my uncle, he's in the military right now. And I love that she's doing this to support them. Thanks to participation by staff and students, this field day was a success. JCPS students continue to learn in creative ways. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Alexis Harding. Third grade teachers at Chansey Elementary opened up one of their professional learning community meetings to give the public a chance to see how they collaborate and use best practices. Once we've tiered our kids, they don't stay put. And in right. PLC, mm -hmm. when we give assessments like this, and we'll meet every six weeks or so to talk about, is it time to move somebody up? Is this too challenging? Mm -hmm. This person's made some growth, so they're ready to hit your right. level and move up. JCPS has launched a new online series where nursing professionals talk about health-related topics. Check out the first episode of Ask a Nurse. Hello, my name is Mary Texas and I'm here today with Holly Walker. Hey! And we are both nurse practitioners with Jefferson County Public Schools Health Services and we're here today to talk to you about flu prevention. Flu prevention! Yeah! The first question we have is, what is the best way to prevent getting the flu? The single best way to prevent getting the flu is to get vaccinated each year. Other great health habits you can practice to prevent the flu are coughing into your elbow, <laughs> washing your hands, and avoid touching your mouth, nose, and eyes. Our next question is, are flu vaccines safe? Huh? Many people are concerned that getting a flu vaccine can actually cause the flu virus. However, this is not true. Flu vaccines either contain an inactivated virus or they do not contain the actual flu virus at all. The only people that are advised not to get the flu vaccine are those under age six months, those with a compromised immune system, <laughs> or those that are actually allergic to the flu vaccine or any of the ingredients. Our next question is, when can a child return to school after they've had the flu? We don't have a set number of days that a student has to be out of school when they have the flu, since you can actually be contagious up to one day prior to getting sick and up to seven days after. However, if a student has a fever of 100.5 or higher, they must stay home and must remain fever free for 24 hours before they can return. For more information about the flu or any other health conditions, please visit us at the JCPS website or contact us at Health Services at 485-3387. That about wraps it up. Stay tuned, we'll have more questions and answers on the next Ask a Nurse. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids.